I always like to operate in a range between 100 and 150 pounds of pressure. In the winter time, when the propane is much colder due to the ambient temperature, we'll heat these tanks with electrical heat tapes to ensure that our pressure is sufficient for the burners to have the right performance level. Uh, some of the things that could happen if you had low pressure, your burner would not perform efficient enough to give you proper reaction time. Uh, if it, for example, with a high pressure, the flame runs about 10 to 12 feet high with a nice yellow tip on it. Uh, with lower fuel pressure, the burner may only run 5 to 6 feet high, so you're getting less heat into the balloon. So the pressure is real important. As you get into pilot training, you'll learn a little bit more about that and you'll experience different pressures. One thing that does happen as you draw liquid fuel off of your tanks, the tanks naturally lose pressure. And when you get down between 10 to, f 10 to 15 percent fuel level in any given tank, you can expect that the pressure at that point in time is going to be much lower than what it was when you first took off. If we're coming in for a landing and one tank's at, at 10 percent or 15 percent and the other tank's full, we use the full tank for landing procedures. We want to have the best burner performance possible at that time. So you'll you know, alternate between uh, fuel systems depending on what you're doing. You might use the lower fuel pressure tank for climbs or flying at higher altitude when control was not quite as important. I want to show you all how this parachute works. You know you've heard me talk about the parachute being able to open and close it in flight. We also use it for a deflation port. This red line here, watch as I pull it. See how it comes down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it just goes right back into place. It's held in place by centering lines that go down toward the outer portion of those. See that solid ring there just below the parachute? It's, that's load tape material. The centering lines go there, and that keeps it centered inside. And then there's a set of lines that come off the parachute and form a, a bundle, a cone, and that actually comes down into attached to the rope that comes into the basket. The maximum continuous temperature is 250 degrees. The maximum or the never exceed temperature is 275 degrees. On Monday at 55 degrees ambient temperature with uh, myself and two passengers, we were operating at about 185 degrees. That gave us equilibrium. Anything above that gave us a certain degree of lift. It's going to vary. You never want to run all the way up to your maximum continuous. Uh, when you do that, you lose uh, performance. The balloon operates more sluggishly. Uh, you get a lot more radiant heat into the basket. Uh, and there's less room for maneuvering if you get into a difficult situation. I always like to operate no more than 25 degrees of my maximum continuous. If I'm at level flight at 225 degrees and I need to climb real fast, I can heat the balloon up 20 degrees and still be below my maximum continuous temperature. Uh, if you run the balloon real hot for extended periods of time, you're going to reduce the life of the fabric. So, you know, there's a lot of considerations there. If you're ready to take off and you're running real close to your maximum continuous temperature, then maybe it's time to get somebody out of the basket and fly with one less person on that particular day. The people that inspect balloons are certified by the Federal Aviation Administration to do that, and uh, they have to go through uh, quite a bit of an education process. It takes about three to four hours to inspect the balloon fully. Uh, they, they, they go through everything. They have a complete checklist. Uh, they pull the envelope out and do a panel by panel visual inspection. Um, if there's any repairs that need to be done, they have to be done at that time. Uh, they check the tanks. They uh, put methanol in the tanks, which is a, an alcohol. Uh, there's a possibility that with the heating and cooling of these tanks that you can get uh, condensation on the inside of them. And the uh, methanol will, if you do get water inside of them, will, will cause that water to come out. It'll, it'll blow it out, burn it out. But it's a real thorough inspection. Helium is used for balloons. Hydrogen is still used for balloons, mostly in Europe. And surprisingly enough, it is relatively safe when used properly. There's a lot of misinformation about hydrogen due to the Hindenburg accident that happened here in the U.S., but hydrogen can be flown very safely, and it's flown frequently in Europe. There's a very limited amount of helium ballooning that takes place in the U.S. because it is more expensive. This is called 
the ground crew manual, also published by the Balloon Federation of America. I would probably recommend this most. It's $5. It's got excellent information. If you're going to be crewing for someone on a regular basis, this will bring you up to snuff. <laughs>